Welcome to the Husqvarna Siora launch event. We are located here at Kamratgården in Gothenburg, southern Sweden, uh, at the training arena for Premium League football club IFK Göteborg. Per, this is an amazing looking product. Can you walk us through the highlights of it? We have named her Siora 546 EPOS. The robotic solution for sports clubs and golf courses, and of course, facility managers. Siora is powerful, but still gentle. Siora is precise and smart and always connected. Siora is ideal for sports clubs with more than two pitches and golf courses with its vast areas. Siora is another team member in your group of loyal employees. The system of Siora consists of four parts. In the rear, the drive unit. In the front, there is a cutting deck. And this can be, in the future, replaced with another tool that does another task on the turf. There is a charging station for the automatic charging and also for the EPOS system. It's a reference station and that's to handle the high precision satellite system. The key benefits of the Siora is, of course, its uh, high capacity for the area. It delivers up to eight pitches of great turf quality, or 50,000 square meters. And by handling this large area, it's, of course, very cost efficient. Siora delivers great turf quality uh, by frequent mowing and using its razor sharp blades. It's designed for easy use and it's really low on maintenance. And since it's battery driven, it's highly sustainable, but also lightweight and low noise. With EPOS technology inside, it's very flexible with its virtual boundaries that you can change by using the app. Previous to this event, we had the possibility to show Siora to a number of experts. Let's listen to what they had to say about it. I'm very impressed when I hear all the list of the technology and all the new way, like the pump system and everything. I was like, this is really the robot I want in my course. Altså, the most spændende ved det her produkt, synes jeg, det er sådan set, at det dækker det der hul i markedet med de store arealer. Mon créneau, non, ce qui me concerne, c'est les terrains de grands jeux, foot, rugby notamment, où aujourd'hui on a une offre assez pléthorique, on va dire, en termes de, de matériel de robot de tonte. Ja, mais det här kommer att förändra eh, mycket i, för fotbollen. Framförallt kanske mindre föreningar som kanske inte har möjligheten att eh, kunna klippa lika ofta. Och så ska man säga att det här med kapaciteten är så stor att det gör det relevant för, för golfbranschen också att kippa det på dokumenten. Siroa ist wirklich groß in jeder Richtung, von den Ausmaßen her, von der Flächenleistung her. Ich denke auch, dass wir solche große Geräte in der öffentlichen und kommunalen Grünflächenpflege brauchen werden. Wir alle wissen, um, was diese Roboterklipperna gör in den Trägården. Das ist ein Stück länger und nicht so lite heller. Das ist nicht nur ein Klipper, sondern es ist noch viel, viel mehr. This is something uh, that we've been waiting for in the golf industry and I think it can solve a lot of problems and uh, we're looking forward to a bright future with Husqvarna. So Per shared with us the highlights of the product. What we are going to do next is to walk them through a little bit more in depth. Uh, let's start with the modular design. Per, why don't you walk us through that? Yes, as mentioned, uh, it's two separated parts with the drive unit and uh, the cutting deck. So starting at the cutting deck, what do we see in the front? Uh, it has ultrasonic sensors uh, for it to be able to see what's, uh, what's in front uh, of the mower. It has uh, safety lights on each corner and also in the back. And that's for, uh, for people to, to, uh, to for sure see this uh, in the dark. Uh, looking at the cutting deck, it's separated from the drive unit, so it's pivoting 
to be able to follow uneven ground and gives a better traction on the drive unit. The drive unit, of course, that's the brain and the heart of the product. At the top here, uh, underneath this plastic part, is the EPOS antenna that gives us the possibility to know exactly where we are with a very high precision. The drive unit actually comes in two different versions. So one being able to deliver the 50,000 square meter, that's the top capacity mower, and then a slightly smaller version that comes in at 40,000 square meters. Uh, at the very rear, uh, you can see that there are uh, rotating wheel brushes here, and that's to keep the, uh, the wheels clean from uh, any grass clippings and make sure that uh, it's evenly spread out over the turf. Thank you, Per, for this. Now let's in walk into the area of um, area capacity. The older models, or the existing range, I should say, manages 5,000 square, square meters, which is quite a lot. But this one manages 50,000 square meters. How did you end up with this number? Yes, area capacity is the most important attribute in the product. Uh, and and the, the area capacity that this system delivers <coughs> depends on the quality that, that you want to have. And we have actually created an image here that is explaining this. So in this picture on the left hand side, you see the sports uh, segment, which is uh, one of three important segments. In the middle, you see golf. And to the right, you see facility management, which is office uh, complexes like you see here, industrial areas, etc., etc. Um, you, you also see uh, three levels here, 25, 50 and 75,000 square meters. And, and depending on what quality you, uh, you require for your areas, this mower will, will deliver different uh, area capacities. So if you're into the very top, top notch, uh, the capacity is around 25,000 square meters. If you settle with slightly lower quality, which would be the majority, I would say, of, of Swedish and European football pitches, it can perform up to 50,000. Uh, if you can settle with yet slightly lower quality, then it can perform up towards 75,000 square meters. So it really depends on your requirement on the lawn. Mm, I see. Uh, and I think we looked at some numbers here. So why don't we directly jump into the cost picture, because that is one of the major advantages. Correct, yes, we have an image for that as well. And, and we have taken here the example of the four, uh, the four uh, pitches, uh, around 25 or just above 25,000 square meters, uh, typically three fairway, uh, obviously depending on, on the actual size of, of the fairways in, in question. And we have looked into uh, three different uh, solutions to maintain uh, the green areas here. Uh, and we have done a total cost of ownership approach. We have considered machine depreciation, uh, as well as maintenance, weekly maintenance, um, yearly maintenance, repair, wearing parts, energy, uh, labor, of course, in this. Um, and what we can say then uh, is that uh, the difference compared to our current solution is that we are 50% cheaper. Uh, and so one Seora is the equivalent of 12 of, of these products that we talked mm. about before. And then we are 50% below that. Uh, if you compare to a traditional mower, uh, that the cost to maintain varies more because the labor cost varies a lot between different markets. Also, whether you are collecting clippings or not makes a fairly big difference. So here it is, uh, it is uh, more difficult to be precise. Simon, you've been run running automower systems for quite some time. Uh, critics might say th these systems is about cutting a number of employees. Could you comment on that? Yeah, I understand the question, but for me it's just all about quality. So for me it's using the, the stuff in a different way to increase the, the quality. Mm. So that's my point. Have you seen the similar um, in your experiences with and meetings? Absolutely. We have a lot of people actually coming back and treating this as a new colleague, mm. uh, not as a threat. But obviously at the end, the customer decides if they want to increase the quality or if they want to cut cost or a combination of the two. Mm. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, next up is the EPOS technology, one of the key attributes of Seora. 
And here, for the benefit of our viewers, we won't share 50 slides explaining it, but rather a film describing how EPOS system works. Uh, we saw a lot of the highlights in the film, but what would you like to underline the most? Uh, yes, one key feature with EPOS is that the mower always know where it is. And by knowing that, uh, we, are, we can uh, program the mower to run on parallel tracks and be very efficient when, when mowing. And that's the key feature to, of reaching the 50,000 square meters, actually. And then, of course, uh, have the virtual boundaries, so no physical wires in the ground, that's important, because then you can do aeration and scarification of the turf. Key for, uh, for sports and, uh, and golf customers. Uh, the precise area management, I would like to highlight that again. Uh, with the different areas, different setting on each areas, with timers and cutting heights. That's important. And we have a picture here showing exactly that. Could you... Uh, uh, Yes, the, this is us, an example please. where uh, the main field here, for example, is, is cut at uh, every day mowing at a certain cutting height. And the two secondary fields are cut uh, three times per week with a different uh, cutting height and a different schedule. One more thing to mention, I would say, is the uh, easy and uh, flexible system when it comes to virtual boundaries. You can easily ad adjust uh, the, the points in the map and adjust the, the area when needed. Great, thank you for summarizing that. Next area that we're going to look into is perhaps the most important of them all, which is the turf quality. Whether you manage a junior football pitch or a top-notch golf course, the bottom line is always quality, turf quality. Husqvarna Siora has a cutting system using pivoting blades, and that is the system that has been used on robotic mowers from Husqvarna since many years now. Uh, Simon, you have been testing this for several years. Can you share your learnings on the quality? Yeah, I've been using the auto mower for a couple of years, and then I've, I've been following the the, the difference between traditional mower and the auto mower. And uh, we, I can see it with both my eyes and also the, the, the trade that we have done, the testing we have done, that the, the coverage of the grass increase. We have seen the root development, it's much better. Uh, also the razor sharp clipping, it's very, uh, very good because it's not draw away the, the leaves or it's cutting in the leaves very sharp. Right, maybe we can get the camera to capture. We have one of the blades that would sit on the on the cutting disc here, weighing less than three grams, correct? 
So, yes. so with that done, it's more or less you you raise the quality, and when by raising the quality, you actually reduce the use of uh, the water, and also you can you need less water. You need it's more or less resistant to uh, to mm -hmm. disease and so on. So. And how, what about the frequency? What's the does it have role in this? Yeah, that's the key of everything. I mean, frequent rolling, it's uh, frequent mowing is the the key of everything. This is how the best pitcher was created because it's mowed every day, and that's the advantage with with robot mower. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, the world, the academic world, has also been looking into the comparison, and joining us from Pisa University, a global authority on sports turf is Michel Pircio. Let's see what he has to say. Since 2015, and comparing auto mowers with rotary mowers or real mowers, and in case of rotary mowers, we've seen a great benefit enhancing turf quality. There has been nearly one point in turf quality score in difference between the auto mowers we tested and the rotary mowers we tested, for instance, on tall fescue. Even on other turf grass pieces, it's been the same. In case of a real mower, the mowing quality was not as different as with the rotary mower, but turf quality still improved. So the constant action of the auto mower has, gone, uh, has given a very big benefit to the turf, even in case of real mowers. Thank you very much for sharing your insights. Uh, and Ulla, were you surprised? Even the real or so-called cylinder mowers? I think we were a little bit surprised uh, to see that, I mean, we, we knew from, from some time that we are usually better than, than traditional rotary, but that we would be on par with real mowers or cylinder mowers was a bit of a surprise. But we have heard that uh, from Pisa and also from another couple of, of, of places. So that's good news, obviously. Thanks for calling in, Michel. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And let's go on to the next topic. Launching a product in 2021, it couldn't be unconnected, of course. Uh, Ulle, besides the area management that's used in, in Seora, what else is the connectivity for? Well, since these products don't have any operators, there's nobody there. Uh, surveillance, monitoring of what they are doing is really key. So we have uh, made the support of our digital solution, what we call Husqvarna Fleet Services, which is an asset management system to keep track of, of the products. Um, so that means that you can, from, uh, from your desktop computer or from a smartphone, control the products, starting them, stopping them one at a time, uh, all at a time if you want. You is can there a limit? You can change schedules. No, there is no limit, actually. You can have uh, hundreds of them in, uh, in, in, your, uh, in your management system. You see the image here, uh, mm -hmm. the, the desktop on the left-hand side. You see a few products connected. You see them also in, the, in a map view. So you see where they are, what they are doing. Uh, this is also a channel for us to update the software in the product. Uh, so uh, as software is developed, as we have c become used to, uh, it, it can be updated over the air without having to connect any hardware to the product. And this is what is called FUTA? Yes, correct? firmware over the air, correct. Okay. Like so Tesla, smartphones, etc. Okay, and what kind of updates could, could that be coming through the air? <coughs> I mean, the de development is still uh, progressing quite fast. So I think all, all the learnings we're getting uh, from the products, uh, refinement, new features, functions, uh, will be uh, used also for on the existing fleet. So uh, to keep the product young, basically. Sounds good. Our next topic is maintenance. Usually quite a messy business at the end of the day. Per, when you designed Seora, what did you have in mind? What was your ambition? Our vision around uh, maintenance was, was really to design it, to, uh, to reduce the maintenance as, as much as possible, uh, because it's a, it's a big task and takes a lot of time normally. But with this, it's much more reduced. Did you even have like a time limit in mind? Uh, the idea was that the easy maintenance part would be, uh, or the maintenance part would be like five minutes per day, not more. Uh, and normally you would not need uh, a daily maintenance for, for this product. Mm. But the maintenance that is should be really easy and accessible for uh, the user. That's important. And uh, that I think we'll have a look at with 
help from Robin out on the field. Yes. So he will now show how easy it is to put the cutting deck into service position and uh, change one of the cutting discs. So can you walk us through exactly what, what is it pulling and so lifting? So he's pulling a lever on the drive unit, lifting up the uh, cutting deck and there you can see that it's really smooth underneath the cutting deck to prevent grass clippings from uh, from getting stuck and also the the rear uh, rotating wheel brushes will help keeping the machine as clean as possible so now he puts on uh, the second cutting disc there and it's an easy task. Mm, it looks like it's almost done already. And yes. this could then actually be done out in the field if necessary. Yes, absolutely. And should also mention that it's IPX5 classified, so you can wash it with a hose to get it clean from clippings. And I, I understand it's different depending on the grass quality, etc. But what, what's the frequency of, of changing the cutting disc and the blades? The blades, uh, which are very small, they, they are only needs changing like uh, once every week or so, or even uh, longer periods of time. Depends on the quality that uh, you want. Mm. Simon, you've been running this in the Nordic climate. How often do you change on your Premier League settings? Once a week, actually, and it's also about the quality of, uh, no, sorry, about the, the soil, actually. So if it's a sand-based or, or clay-based soil, mm. uh, that uh, you have to change it more often if it's sand-based and much clay. Mm. But in a facility management setting where the quality issues isn't... Then that's... every second, every third week or so. Right. And it's minutes, it looks like. It's a quick change. Right. And if you uh, then look at the safety area, Per, uh, what have you done on, on safety to make Siora as safe as possible? Yeah, since it's an autonomous uh, robotic mower, it needs to be very safe. That, mm -hmm. That's one of the most important features, of course. And uh, our target has always been to reduce the risk uh, and risk of injury to get that as, as low as possible with the robotic mower. Perhaps we can walk over to the machine and, and take a look at some of the features. Yes, let's, let's do, do that. that. So I will flip open the uh, cutting deck into service position again and here you can see that it's uh, a very big uh, distance from the edge of the uh, cutting deck into the, the cutting discs and that's really the safety zone so that's an important uh, part there. Uh, of course we have collision sensors uh, on, on the product and uh, the safety lights as we showed before, those can be configured into uh, strobe light as well uh, to be even more visible for uh, any users or bypassers. Uh, in the front here, uh, we have the ultrasonic sensors as mentioned before. And uh, we will now have a look at uh, Robin again out on the field and see what happens when uh, the mower will see an object in front of him. So the mower approaches Robin, it will slow down and then right in front of him it will turn back and uh, go another path. And with quite a good margin. Yes, we want to keep him safe, of course. Of course. So Simon, we have talked a lot about the benefits of Husqvarna Siora, including turf quality that you brought up many times. Uh, cost savings, maintenance, to mention a few. Uh, but I would like to hear from you, what do you see as the biggest benefit of this machine? I think we can improve the quality of, uh, the, quality of the pitches and the, and the facilities in all of the sport area, actually. We bring in a high-tech technology machine uh, to open for all of the market, which means that the quality will improve and uh, the, the game of sports will, will be better. Let's hope so. That sounds like a fantastic future. Uh, and speaking of the future, Pal, when will we see Husqvarna Siora on the market? We are launching it today, uh, but it will be available for sale in first quarter of 2022.
Thank you for that. Ole, I would like to hear your final words, Mr. Robotics. I can only echo what Simon said, having spoken to so many representatives of, of the world of sports, hearing about the issues they are facing daily, I'm truly convinced that with Siora we have solutions to their issues. Thank you for that, and thank you for listening in, and goodbye from us here in Gothenburg. <laughs>